If you look through the book of Daniel, every, just about every time he had a profound encounter, it says, and I, Daniel, was sick. For wow. Da, 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 da. He, his body had a hard wow. time processing all of that. And prophetic people, intercessors who take on burdens, who, who are so in tune with the spirit realm, are beginning to take on autoimmune diseases, thing, all of these wow. things that are, that are connected. I know you get a lot of dreams. Um, you know, I, I, I always joke and say, you know, I'm a young man, so I get more visions. You know, I'm not an old man, so I, I rarely get <laughs> dreams. Uh, but, you know, there, there are times where God meets me in significant dreams. Uh, and there are seasons where God opens up the portal in the realm of dreams. And I know that the Lord meets you a lot in dreams. And I, I think this is going to be so key and helpful and beneficial for a lot of you. Because a lot of you, quote unquote, have insomnia or you think you have insomnia and you're warring and wrestling in the middle of the night in the fourth, the third and the fourth watch. And you're like, Oh, I don't want to watch that. But then the Lord is just like just downloading revelations to you, you know, and you're trying to sleep and you feel like you're in this tussle, this wrestle in the midnight hour. But I believe it's because the Lord is causing you to pray. So my question to you, Fee is we're talking about the glory of an intercessor, but sometimes you don't get much sleep. Sometimes yeah. you're getting bogged up with revelation and downloads and, and, you know, you're praying for someone's salvation. You know, God's uh, releasing all these things. You're like, oh, Lord, what do I do? And, you know, so, again, the greater the revelation uh, and the greater the submission, the greater the intercession. Uh, but, you know, how do you deal with that? And what's your encouragement for those people that uh, are dreamers? Uh, you know, uh, they have insomnia, quote unquote, it's difficult for them to sleep uh, and they're getting so much. And what's your encouragement for them, just even for you personally, what, you know, where you're at with the Lord? I think you just have to find your pace uh, for one with God, you know, um, really discern. Am I in a season of, of a night watch or am I in a, or is this, or is this warfare? Or a lot of times intercessors will feel the warfare, you know, and that's the call to prayer. But sometimes there's an assignment to rob you from rest and sleep. So I think the first thing would be discern, yeah. you know, then the second thing would be, <clears throat> um, you know, just engage the grace that is over you in those hours, because those are the, those are the, um, the watches that God is releasing you in, in an assignment in the spirit. And I think that, um, you know, the best way that I I sometimes, you know, you can, you can come into a place where you can start bur burning your adrenal glands. I mean, like physically speaking, like it does take a toll on your body. How, do you, smart. how yeah. do you manage that, right? So um, I do certain things. I, I pray for my central nervous system after those times in prayer. When I come out of a profound encounter or I come out of a very intense um, place of prayer and intercession, I just start speaking over my central nervous system because... It is, um, I That's actually good. had a dream about it uh, where the Lord told me that you process spiritual reality and reality through the central nervous system. So the Holy Spirit, because the central nervous system is a, is a dimension in your body, like a real place in your body that computes electrical charges. And so if you're in a place where you're supercharged and it's, it's actually burning out your body because your body is not in its resurrected state. It doesn't really know what to do with all of that. So what you have to do, That's so good. what the Lord told me in the dream was like, you have to start speak. You have to start speaking to your central nervous system that all hostility to the anointing and everything, you know, because the natural hostility to the spiritual, right? Yeah. But if you start speaking the hostility to be disarmed and function in the anointing, your body is going to be able to do what it's supposed to do, your brain, your adrenal glands are going to fall into place. And, and I also, you know, I take, I take times of rest. I, I will actually honor, you know, it, however much I need, however much I need, I, I, I feel <clears throat> that I need. Um, and you ha if you have the liberty to do this, take a day or two or three um, off because your body is processing a lot. Daniel is if you look through the book of Daniel, every, just about every time he had a profound encounter, it says, and I, Daniel, was sick. For wow. Da, 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 da. He, his body had a hard wow. time processing all of that. And prophetic people, intercessors who take on burdens, who, who are so in tune with the spirit realm, are beginning to take on autoimmune diseases, thing, all of these wow. things that are, 
that are connected to the central nervous system and it's because they're an overload and they don't know so how good. to rest. And so we have to learn how to rest in the presence and the glory of God and let and command our, just as our spirit rest, our body, our DNA, our RNA, our central nervous system needs to come into a place of rest so it can actually become, start entering into a resurrected dimension of Christ where it doesn't affect, the toll doesn't affect you. My gosh, you're preaching here. This is so good. Uh, I remember uh, years ago, of course, uh, every movement, listen to this, people. Every movement has its pros and its cons, okay? Every movement has its maturity phase process where you're like, uh, I don't know about that, Willis. You know, every movement kind of goes through its, its questionable times, uh, especially if it's something that's genuine. Uh, but I remember, you know, even in the House of Prayer movement, you know, the the 90s and the early thousands, you know, I mean, people would be in the midnight oil in the midnight hour and, you know, like they would be so dysfunctional, like they would literally not even be human beings anymore uh, because they're so stuck and caught up in the swirl and the realm of prayer and intercession that they're so fried. That's why people always made jokes to call uh, the coffee movement and the prayer movement go hand in hand, you know, <laughs> and uh, uh, but how do you keep your sanity, and I know you said it earlier, but how do you keep your sanity and keep your health at the same time, like your soul, uh, and be a healthy intercessor rather than like this crazy, like, yeah, you know, and I, I believe in warfare. I believe in, you know, uh, uh, but I love what Kat Kerr says, I don't do demons. Uh, too many times we give way too much attention uh, and authority to devils. But, you know, how do you stay in the place of being healthy and being whole and still being an average, uh, like a real human being and not like this, you know, Harry Potter, just always fried with your hair all over, all over the place. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Ha, ha, yeah ha, talk to them. Talk to them. Thief. Okay. So number one, go out and work out. If you are walking in a lot of anointing, you're walking in a lot of encounters, your body, your lymphatic system, all of that needs to process what is happening to you spiritually. If you don't work out, you're going to start um, feeling, um, ex you know, just extreme mood swings. You're going to start feeling wow. out, of, out of sorts. You're going to start feeling very ungrounded. And so I had to learn this the hard way where I started experiencing the glory of God in such realms. But then physically, I was so disjointed and disconnected that I had to come to a place where I really had to seek the Lord. And all of this came actually in dreams where the Lord's like, you have to learn how to manage um, your being in this dimension because you're going to burn out. And so I wow. say work out. Okay. Another thing is eat well. Okay. Don't eat junk food. Eat, eat food that is conducive for wow. high frequency. Wow. So there's a reason why Daniel ate fruits and vegetables for uh, uh, so much because it helped him, it helped his body process. Now, don't go into overextended seasons of fasting because that will kill you. That will burn you out. That's another thing that intercessors need to, need to learn because sometimes we go overkill. We have to learn the ebb and flow of like, okay, I'm in a season of high spiritual intensity, so I need to eat this. You have to be very smart about how you process your, your life and your moment. And then if you're not in that season, eat well, but eat some meat, eat whatever it is that your body needs. Another thing is yeah. I, 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 I do things that I love. I try to give my mind, you know, things that, that I feel I'm connected to as far as whether it's reading or whether it's watching shows. I will binge out on Netflix every once in a while and, and just enjoy life, you know, or go out and, 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 and just be with the people that you really love. I think that connection um, is the best way of grounding you. That's good. In a lot of ways, so... Connection is the best way of grounding you. And people of God, you can be so yeah. in the glory, yet be grounded here on earth. Okay? And that's what God wants. Yeah. He wants a healthy, beautiful bride. Not a bride that's just, you know, so glorious that you're just an ethereal, spiritual, you know, uh, little Twinkie, whatever. Anyways. But uh, I, I want to ask you this, Fee, because you're a yeah. woman of God, and I... I'm a champion, a full believer of one. I just did a, 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 a sermon on women in the fivefold on Mother's Day. And, you know, I'm a champion. I'm a full-fledged believer 
of women of God in ministry, in platform ministry, in the fivefold, and all of that. But I want to shift gears to this right now. Sorry, it's a it's a train. <laughs> Jesus, are train. you calling? Is that you, <laughs> Jesus? Is that a confirmation here? Oh, the glory train is here, people. Woo! All right, here we go. The glory oh. train. Let's get on board here. Cut up a book. But uh, I want to talk about, um, uh, you know, uh, you're a woman of God and you're an intercessor. You're a prophet. You're a seer. Um, you know how how how. Uh, What's what's your encouragement for, you know, the all the ladies and even the men out there, you know, that are, are wanting to pursue a full time ministry that are wanting to, uh, you know, uh, dive into more of these spiritual things. What's your encouragement as a woman of God? Talk to them. Talk to them. <laughs> to the women or to both? Uh, to the woman and then men, if you feel like it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think that the first thing would be to be confident in who you are in the Lord. I think if you're rooted in your identity, it's going to be a lot easier to pursue the bigger things. Um, you know, a lot of times I think that for women, um, you know, transitioning into this place where, you know, a lot of women have been oppressed and not given a, a place to, to um, speak out and, and, and be a voice. Now we're transitioning into a place where there is being room made for them. And, um, you know, I, I think that a lot of women, what I personally see is that there is an assertiveness that needs to come on the, on the daughters of God, a boldness that needs to come on the daughters of God, that it's even, um, I notice this all the time, and, I, and it's something that I, I tell the, the, the younger girls around me that I, I may be mentoring or whatever, you know, I was like, you know, even in your tone and how you speak, you need to be assertive. You need to stop asking for permission in those little curls in your voice, you know, kind of like, well, I think that we should do this, you know, there's like almost this question mark that you're like subconsciously asking wow. for permission that even there has to be a shift inside a woman where you start shifting into this place of asking for permission and just doing what God is telling you to do, even in your own voice, even in how you share conversationally and how you carry yourself. And I think that once you start um, commanding the authority that, has, that God has put upon your life, then things and opportunities will start opening up and, God, and people will recognize the authority on you. They will recognize and hear the authority of heaven and they will know that where you've been in God and they'll start receiving That's you good. and your gift will be, start making room for you. So I tell, I tell the ladies, I'm like, just go big. Don't, don't ask for permission. Don't wait. Um, you know, don't wait to get married. Don't wait for a man to come into your life. Come on. Just move with the voice of the Lord. Sub submit to authority, but don't wait for permission that isn't, that isn't the authority that God has placed on your life. That's so good. And even as you're sharing fee, I'm reminded a hundred percent, which I'm reminded of this fee. Uh, the book of Romans, Apostle Paul says, you know, no man or human being in the flesh. You know, I mean, you know them by the spirit and uh, you know, this suit that we wear, whether male, female, this suit on the outside, too many of us, we judge one another by the flesh, by what we see on the outside, rather than who we are in the spirit and what we're carrying in the spirit. And so many times, I mean, I, I just brought a group up to visit Mama Captain Coleman up there, uh, you know, just on Saturday. And again, the Lord has so much inside, uh, you know, uh, of women just uh, because of the DNA, the makeup and all of that. Uh, but I believe that the Lord uh, is releasing uh, and revealing who women are. not just in the flesh, not just in the outward form. And I believe the Lord's giving people, women of God, men of God, authority figures, that eye to see that and to help call them out, to champion them for such a time as this. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that, you know, women have a, a, a very unique, will carry a unique anointing into certain things. And, um, you know, there's a creative realm, there's a realm of mystery that God has given a woman um, that they're just, um, they're just naturally inclined to. Um, does that make sense? Like, it's usually the woman who is the discerner, you know, when it comes to a married couple. You know what I mean? They have, they have that, uh, an, extra, an extra inch, um, maybe a leaning towards certain, certain dimensions in God. And so we need the fullness of both of them. But um, I feel that, you know, a lot of women, there hasn't been strong models necessarily, um, a lot. I think that we have... 
flurries of, of women who are walking in, in something profound. But, you know, I look around just in, in, just in, in, in general and I see so many girls that don't really have a model to look up to that they, they're like, man, you know, I could do that. I could actually do that. And we forget that a lot of us who are pioneering in the anointing, who are as women pioneering in the anointing, pioneering in the realms of God or pioneering in businesses or whatever, we're actually modeling something for a younger generation that can have, that can come out of a limitation and enter into a fresh boldness. But a lot of the boldness and courage is going to be, is going to be born out of seeing this first wave of women being released. Come on, so good. And I do believe, uh, you know, the Lord is raising up and releasing women revivalists, reformers in this time and in this era. Hollywood, America, the world is picking up on it. You know, Marvel Woman, uh, you know, uh, the Avengers. I mean, I mean the, the list of stories goes on, right? Uh, but I do believe Wonder Woman, Wonder Working Woman. I believe God's raising up Wonder Working Woman. Catherine Coleman, Amy Sylvia McPherson, Stacey Campbell, Juanita Bynum, Fiorello Giordano, and there's so many. And I'm so appreciative that the Lord is raising up women in this hour and this time. Uh, and of course, just to say this, uh, most women, I mean, women, your, your DNA, your makeup is to birth children. And, uh, you know, so there's that intuition, that intuitive connection, uh, even to the God realm of birthing and the supernatural and uh, birthing miracles and destiny. So, and the nurturing in the womb and the caring and, and uh, you know, uh, I do believe that the Lord is releasing a uh, woman of God to birth and to help nurture, to help release and, uh, you know, to preach, to pray, to prophesy, to slay devils, cast out demons. And the Lord's doing that. So good. Uh, I, we're, this is so good, Afi. Uh, I want to ask you one more question before I bring this to a close. Um, okay. <clears throat> the glory of an intercessor for every single person who is a weary, tired intercessor. Um, you know, they're, they're tired, they're weary. And, you know, what would your encouragement for them be and uh you know this concept or this revelation that there is a glory for an intercessor what would your encouragement for them be and i, I want I to was... say this real quick sorry to cut you off men of god you are intercessors as well being an intercessor is not just for a woman all right you know i mean for so long it's just been the gray-haired curly-haired ladies you know, grandma, you know, just praying in, in the Texan church. You know, that's not, that's not intercessors. Intercessors are not only for women, it's for men of God. And intercessors are people who stand in the gap and they stand as a witness, as Fiolella was saying, and they decree. It's actually a kingdom realm. It's a kingdom authority. So um, men of God rise up as intercessors in prayer wars. Amen. So what would your encouragement be, Fee? <clears throat> my encouragement would be to detach from the assignment and engage the presence of the Lord. Wow. I think that is sometimes the hardest thing for an intercessor is to let go of the assignment for a time, for, for a day or for hours and just focus on the presence and not trying to wow. pull, trying to get in the presence, but really rest in the glory. Like if you don't know that place of rest in the atmosphere and glory and presence of God, um, you're, you're walking in a, um, there's an imbalance there because you're super engaged in contending prayer, but there's no, there's no revelation and no sustainable realm of the glory where you can just turn into it and, um, and, and enter into rest with the Lord. And I, so I think that the, the, the hardest thing is at times for an intercessor because they're so connected to that place of, of the warfare, you know, because they're in tune, they're discerning things and it's amped up for them because they're, they're feeling it. Um, they're the forerunners to feel it. So, um, so it's disengaged from it, just lay it down and take on the burden that is easy, that is light, that is in Christ and, and just return to the center that is Jesus continually refocus on the presence of the Lord, refocus on that one place where, you know, you are in the vine and you're just abiding. And I know that that's super hard and sometimes it's hard to disengage from all of it. And I know at times that me, for me, it takes sometimes hours, sometimes days you know, where you're just coming out of it, but you have to build, um, just as so much good. as you build a momentum to engage, you have to build a momentum to disengage. Wow. You're able to just go in and rest. And so, and a lot of the warfare will break in that place, you know, will break off of you in that place of, of returning to the, to the core 
of the presence of the Lord. So I don't have a, a, a you know, a something unique or anything, um, you know, different other than that's just what I've learned to do. I've, I've learned to have to, you know, come into a place so good. and also reach out for prayer, reach out for people to pray for you, have them pray for you. That's good. Wow. That's so good. It reminds me, Fee, I mean, when uh, people in the military, of course, you got boot camp, you got training. And then when you go off to war, uh, I, I forget uh, what, what that terminology is. You know what the terminology is? When they come back home, they actually have like a two, three month. Uh, I don't think it's a furlough, but they have a two, three month season where they're actually going through counseling and they're becoming mm -hmm. normalized again from the PTSD and from the trauma. I know I'm talking to somebody from the PTSD, the trauma, the stress, the anxiety. They, when they come back from war and they come home, they go through this counseling and all this intensive, just like, oh, we're just gonna wash you clean, spick and span, so you're not carrying the, the torments of war and that doesn't define you when you come back. And I think you, you gave something yeah. so solid, Fee, saying that you are not your assignment. Come on, yeah. your assignment does not define you. And I'm going to say this. I know there's a lot of codependent papas and mamas out there that you think it's the end of the world when your child is released from your home and you're like, ah, my identity is in my kid. And once they leave, your whole world crashes and you don't even know who you are and you go through a midlife crisis. But you are not your child and you are not your assignment, which means that you can birth you can release and let go and give it to God because God is the one who defines you and it's him and it's his presence that sustains you. It's not a season. It's not an assignment. It's not what you give birth to, you know, give, give birth to it, be faithful, but you know, it doesn't uh, define you people of God. Amen. So wow, yeah. it's been so good. Um, this has been the longest uh, broadcast we did in the last four days wow. because it's been so rich. Uh, Come on. And, um, yeah. Fee. Uh, any last words before I ask you to close us off in, in a prayer of impartation for all of those intercessors here? You know, just the, the last thing was that um, look for, for um, I know a lot of ministers that I personally know that, you know, go through, um, they go through cyclical uh, inner healing seasons where they'll actually go to ministries that Come will on. walk them through some inner healing. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, get, get some counsel, heavenly counsel in your life. Um, and, and do what it, do your due diligence to your own upkeeping as far as spiritually and, and mentally, you know, what do you need? Um, go get a sozo every six months, <laughs> you know, go yeah, you, or every you, three months. So, you know, go, go, go do whatever it is that you need to do. Um, so that you're healthy and that you're whole and, and you have a, a, a different input that, than your own in your own situation and how you're so walking good. your own, um, spiritual walk. So that was just my last bit, but. Do you That's want me to pray? so good. Um, real quick, guys, we need you to be healthy. We need you for the long run. We don't just need you for a season where you crash and you burn and you burn out. And that's something I'm always learning. Everybody's always amazed at what I do and what I, where I'm at. I am too. I know it's the grace of God. But, you know, we need healthy, whole people. We need you to live and last for the long run because God wants you to see. Uh, the things you've been praying for and uh, how sad when you birth it, but you're too weak, too frail, too poor, too disjointed that you don't want a thing of it. God mm. wants you to enjoy the spoil, enjoy the plunder, enjoy the harvest when you Come get on. it. Amen. So sustain yourself with accountability, with a family. You're not alone. And, uh, you know, walk through it uh, with the family and friends of God. Amen. Wow. It's been so good. Mm. Uh, Fee, you, you shared some key things, revelations that I've never heard. So that was incredible. I want you to pray, Fee, for all of those intercessors. Uh, in fact, all of you guys, I'm sure you received this. Share this on your wall, too. But I want you to pray for an impartation of, of wisdom, just whatever's on your life, you know, just really, especially to the women of God, too. So I want you to release two prayers, one for the women of God and the second one for the intercessors. So, Okay, so I'll pray for the women first. Amen. Father, I thank you for every woman watching this broadcast and that will watch this broadcast, Lord. Father, I call them into their divine mm. identity right now, God. I call the, their, their makeup, their divine makeup, their creative makeup right now to come into alignment 
in Jesus' name, Lord. We take off every limitation. We break off every limitation, God, every argument, Lord, every argument that has come against their destiny, against their voice, God. We disarm every argument. We dismantle every argument, God, and we release them in the fullness of who they are with the full permission to be the wonder that they were created to be, Lord. To, to birth and bring forth the things that you've put inside of them, God. That the earth will be filled, Lord, with a different hue of your glory, God, as women step into their destiny, Lord. And Father, we just thank you, God, for what you're birthing in women, Lord. For, for, for the things that you have imparted and imprinted in the, in, in the women's hearts, God. And in, the, in, in what they bring, Lord, in creation, God. What they impart, wow. God, into a generation, Lord. Father, we bless the impartation of women. We bless right now the impartation that they release even into creation, God. The resonance and the sound of your tenderness, of your, of your fierceness, of your goodness, of your covering, God, in, in a unique way, Lord. Father, we bless them in their, in their assignment, God, and in their identity, Lord. In Jesus' name. Come and Father, on. I pray for, for, for an impartation for, for the ones that are carrying the grace for intercession or who want to step into deeper dimensions, God. Right now, Lord, that you would overshadow them, God, with the wisdom of heaven, Lord, to be able to prosper spirit, soul, and body, God, in the midst of their assignment, in the midst of opposition, Lord. Father, that they would be truly a vessel, God, that carries heaven on earth, Lord, that there would be truly a gateway, God, that is not overcome, Lord, by the assignment, is not overcome by the opposition, Lord, but is standing tall, is standing tall, God, in reverence and in, and, in, and in a witness, God, on the earth, Lord, to manifest the influence, God, of your glory on the earth right now, Jesus, in their families, Lord, in in their assignments, God. But I pray, Father, that you would begin to expand the mind of Christ inside of them, Lord. That you would shift them, God, into every place of prayer, Lord. Into every place of manifestation, God. Father, that there would be a shift, Lord, in, in, in the tangibility of their prayers, Lord. Where they're standing, God, would become to, to, to transform what, what is on the earth around them, God, where they're standing in heaven, God, would begin to, to take on the image, Lord, of the things that they're seeing in the heavens, God. And Father, I pray that they would see, Lord, their prayers birth. Come I on. pray, Father, for that place, God, that, 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 that the plowman would overtake the reaper, Lord. Father, that, that, that place, God, where the house of prayer, Lord, is set up in glory, wow. God, on the earth. Father, that they would see their prayer, prayers in glory, that they would see themselves standing as a house of prayer in the glory of God, Lord. Not just covertly, God, but overtly, Lord. I pray for Come a transitional on. glory right now in their lives, God, to begin to take root in their place, God, for the angelic assignment for the transition right now to come into activation in Jesus' name. We loose right now the sound right now of the assignment to resound in the heavenly places to begin to transition them, God, into a place from standing in, in that gateway, God, to rising as a head, Lord, to, o- to, to open up the gateway, God, to open up the gateway, Lord a rising in their authority, a transition. I just prophesy over you right now that you're in a transitional glory that is transitioning you into the rising of your authority in the gateway that God has assigned you in. In Jesus' name, right now, I release that word. Amen. Amen, amen, and amen. And we declare that you are in a time and a season of fulfillment. You will birth every single thing that is according to the will of God. And uh, you will be able to build a realm and have strategic uh, people set up around you so that you could carry it and see it through. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. amen. Wow.